she she won't be she won't be selling any Berkshire <laughs> to buy the index funds. All all of my Berkshire, every single share, will go to philanthropy. So the I don't even regard myself as owning Berkshire. You know, basically, it, it's it, it's committed. And I've, I, so far, about forty percent has already been distributed. So the question is, somebody who is not an investment professional will be, I hope, reasonably elderly by the time that the uh, uh, estate gets settled. And what is the best investment, meaning one that there would be less worry of any kind connected with and less people coming around and saying, why don't you sell this and do something else and all those things. She's going to have more money than she needs. And the big thing then you want is money not to be a problem. And there will be no way that if she holds the S&P, virtually no way absent something happened with weapons of mass destruction, but virtually no way that she won't have, she'll have all the money that she possibly can use. She'll have a little liquid money so that if stocks are down tremendously at some point, they close the stock exchange for a while, anything like that, she'll still feel that she's got plenty of money. And the object is not to maximize. It doesn't make any difference whether the amount she gets doubles or triples or anything of the sort, the, the important thing is that she never worries about money the rest of her life. And I had an Aunt Katie here in Omaha, who Charlie knew well, and worked for her husband, as did I. And she worked very hard all her life and had lived in a house she paid, I think, I don't know, $8,000 for 45th and Hickory all her life. And, uh, because she was in Berkshire, uh, she ended up, she lived in 97, she ended up with you know, a few hundred million. And she would write me a letter every four or five months and she said, dear Warren, you know, uh, I hate to bother you, but am I gonna run out of money? And, <laughs> and I, would, I would write her back and I'd say, dear Katie, it's a good question because if you live 986 years, you're going to run out of money. And, <laughs> and then about four or five months later, she'd write me the same letter again. And I, I have seen, there's no way in the world, if you've got plenty of money, that it should become a, a minus in your life. And there will be people, if you've got a lot of money, that come around with various suggestions for you, sometimes well-meaning, sometimes not so well-meaning. So if you've got something that's certain to deliver, you know, it was all in Berkshire. They'd say, well, if Warren was alive today, you know, he would be telling you to do this. I, I just don't want anybody to go through that. And, and the S&P will be a, f I think actually what I'm suggesting is what, what a very high percentage of people should do something like that. And I don't think they will have as, I think there's a chance they won't have as much peace of mind if they own one stock and they've got neighbors and friends and relatives that are trying to do some, like I say, sometimes well-intentioned, sometimes otherwise, to do something else. And so I think it's a policy that will get a good result and is likely to stick. Charlie? Well, as Becky said, the longers are different. I, I want them to hold the Berkshire. Well, I want to hold the Berkshire, too. <laughs> no, I bet. I mean, I, I, I don't like the Berkshire. I recognize the logic of the fact that that S&P algorithm is very hard to beat. You know, diversified portfolio of big companies, it's all but impossible for most people. But, you know, it's, I'm just more comfortable with the Berkshire. Well, it's the family business. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but it, it uh, I've just, I've seen too many people as they get older, particularly being susceptible and just having to listen to the arguments of people coming Well, along. if you're going to protect your heirs from the stupidity of others, you may have some good system, but I'm not much interested in that subject. Okay. <laughs>